Hello and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great GM. In today's episode, I've brought you inside the house and to my library. Now, the reason why I brought you here is because I'm one of the old guard. I firmly believe that you should have a series of books that you can turn to for inspiration and just to generally improve your knowledge. So I'm going to take you through a couple of the books that I have in my library and explain to you how I've managed to use the information that's within them to help build some really cool campaigns that you might not necessarily get to. So, of course, a lot of you are going, oh, but I've got the internet and that's the biggest library in the world and it even comes with videos from YouTube. Yes, you do. On the other hand, there is nothing quite as inspirational, in my opinion, as being able to turn to a book, any book for example, such as this one on the complete Roman Emperor lifestyle, and just casually page through it and look at pictures of statues, base relief imagery, ideas behind different types of emperor styles. This is the kind of stuff that you don't necessarily get on the internet. On the internet you'd be looking at a picture of an emperor and the very next minute you're looking at a kitten and then after that you're looking at some video about some Chinese person singing about poultry. So here it allows you to kind of focus around a specific topic, the, the setting that your game is going to be in, but then to bring it back to your game. I mean look at this image here. I don't know if you can see it very clearly, but this is the image of a man who's got a lion on his head and a club over his shoulder um, this is Commodus, the emperor, as if he was Heracles, so that would be the Nemean lion that he's slain on top of his head. Doesn't that just inspire you to go and have this immortal lion that can only be slayed through a very specific ritual, which you can now throw at your players? Or perhaps there's this mad emperor and the players are hired to help him go and hunt this creature that is immortal. I mean, it just, it just jumps out of you. Look at this church here. This is amazing. This is just some kind of Romanesque church. What happens in that church? What inspires that church? Look at the massive shift that the Roman Empire went through, where it went from worshipping all of these gods to suddenly worshipping one god. It went from executing the worshippers of the one god to embracing them. That's an interesting period of history, and that's certainly a period that you could bring into your campaign. What happens if the drow suddenly decided that they no longer wanted to worship Lilith, the spider goddess, and that they were actually moving towards a pantheon of gods? What would be the ramifications? How would your players accept or experience that shift? So let's look at a couple of these books. Now I've spoken about this one, Evolving the Alien with Jack Cohen and uh, Ian Stewart. Favourite book. There are no pictures in here, there are only words. And it's upside down right now, but there are there are no pictures, so you're going to have to read this one. And uh, I thoroughly recommend it. Now, obviously, my library's got a whole lot of fiction in it, which makes sense. But it's got a lot of non-fiction, and it's the non-fiction that I turn to for inspiration. So, if we come over to here, I've got this book. This is a very interesting book. This is called the West, the Western Way of War. And it looks at classical battles in Greece. And it's something that we don't take into account in the medieval era. The exact types of battle they have. Now, you don't have to become a historian who knows how classical Greek battles were fought and how to evolve an alien and all of the Roman history. You don't have to have that. But exposing yourself to as much stuff as you can within the genre of the role-playing style that you're going for can only improve your research capacities, which improves your imagination and your apparent ability to make amazing stories come out of absolutely nothing. Now, right next to that, I've got this book, which is very interesting. Matt Kaplan's book, The Science of Monsters. Now, this book looks at where do the theories, where do the actual stories of monsters come from? What are vampires, where do vampires come from? Where do we actually have the first literary reference to vampires? And why do people believe in them? This book is amazing in terms of exploring how humans have evolved in terms of our stories 
from monsters that are in the dark all the way through to monsters that are inside. It's a very interesting, interesting read. We now skip. Let's say that we're doing a science fiction campaign. Brian Greene is your friend here. The Hidden Reality Parallel Universes. This is a very interesting book. It's quite light reading. You don't have to understand quantum mechanics too much. It does help if you if you get the idea of a string theory and that kind of thing. No, I'm joking. This book is a very easy read in terms of how would parallel universes work? How could we move from one to the other? And it isn't your standard kind of science fiction stuff. So what I'm advocating by showing you all these different books is I'm advocating that, yes, you can watch movies to get inspiration, but most of your peers will have done so as well. If you can take what you've watched in the movies and combine it with what you've read or what you've discovered in, in the library that you're building, it's so much better. And you will elevate yourself from just being a regular bloke who tells a good story to being this master storyteller who tells Hollywood style narratives, or better yet, tells better than Hollywood narratives because they have to tone it down. If we move over here, here's a nice little light read for you. Romanesque architecture. Why would you want to read a book about Romanesque architecture? Well, this architecture is prevalent basically from the, you got it, Roman period all the way through to today. We still use Romanesque architecture and will continue to do so for a few very good reasons. It's fairly universal. But by understanding Romanesque architecture and reading books like this, which come with blueprints, here's a map for a dungeon for you. And guess what? It's a practical map that actually works because it had to, because this housed a whole bunch of monks. This is an old monastery. And here are some beautiful visuals that you can add to your library, to your visual um, uh, dictionary that you can literally describe these amazing structures. And then go further. Look at the detailing. Have you ever described this giant statue that's part of the castle that didn't attack the players? What's the story behind this bloke? Is there a legend that your players can go and investigate and suddenly participate on? Here is just a ornamental bowl with two swans with their necks breaking around one another, but they're breathing fire. Fire breathing swans? That's interesting. So the books, the books, the books, the books, and I mean, again, it's not about becoming a professional on these subjects. It's about just becoming aware of there's more to life than what initially meets the eye. If we then move over this way, Supercontinent. This is a fantastic book. Ted Neal. Also, not a lot of pictures because it's talking about continental plate tectonics. How does this help you as a GM? What do you care about Pangaea or beyond or before? Well, if you're designing a world and you really want to make it detailed, then you kind of need to read books like this, which describe how mountains are formed and how they collapse and how things change and how we learn about them. Moving outside of the realm of that sort of thing, this rather bizarre looking fellow, Konstantin Stanislavski, He's the method actor. Now, there are a whole bunch of ways of acting. Method acting says you become the character. You become the orange. You become the tiger. You become the weasel. That's what this fellow was talking about. Do you have to become the world's greatest actor? No. But by reading his book, Creating a Role, or any of his other books, because he's written quite a few, it just helps you to understand the acting process, which, if it makes your NPCs just that much better, what a pleasure! Thank you very much, Mr. Stanislavski. If we move away from that and we want to look at something a little bit more in the lines of GMing, well, this book is one of the books that I thoroughly recommend. Theme and Strategy. The last time I saw it, it was out of print. Amazon had some secondhand copies. This is actually a secondhand copy that I uh, picked up from, from somewhere. It's a fantastic book in terms of creating a strong narrative structure. And a lot of the videos that I talk about pulls from this book. So your library should be this mix of material 
There's a whole bunch of junk in here as well. Um, if you look at uh, role-playing games, role-playing books, up here, everyone's a critic of your art collection and your book collection, right? Everyone's a critic. So if you look up here, these are all the old Choose Your Adventure books that Joe Dever wrote, and he eventually created a role-playing system out of that, which we reviewed on the channel, by the way. Go and give it a look if you haven't. But you want to surround yourself by as much material as you can because every single book in here, if I pick it up and I look at it, I go, yes, that's a great idea for a, for a story. And I can keep these next to the bed, I can keep them in the loo, wherever it is that you read your books, so that you can refer to them whenever and draw inspiration whenever. And just by having them out, unlike a Kindle, for example, I can walk past and go, damn it, Pompeii was an okay book. But yes, what about a city? that gets buried by a volcanic flow and our characters are in it. Or they discover that the volcano is going to erupt but no one wants to do anything. Um, spoiler alert. The books are there to give you a visual cue and to help expand your mind. And if that is something that you're prepared to do and it's something that you're prepared to invest in, well, then you are well on your way to becoming a truly great game master. I hope this whirlwind tour of the library of me is uh, in some way inspirational and gets you to go out there and go to some secondhand book and pick up some dead tree with bits of ink on it and allow you to sit and hallucinate for half an hour while looking at a page and come up with some really great stories. What books do you have in your library? Do you even have a library? Do you know what a library is? Have you eaten any books recently? Share your comments below. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you think this was useful and you want to see more. You can join us on Patreon. We're there and always eager for more people to join us so that we can do bigger and better things. And um, head on over to www.greatgamemaster.com and you can vote for your topic of choice for us to cover on the channel as well as add topics that you would like to see us cover. So until next time, happy gaming. Or should I say, happy reading.